We have three types of stress that we process in the physical body. We have physical stress, that's like trauma, accidents, injuries, falls. Uh, and then you have chemical stress like toxins or pesticides or pollutants or viruses or bacteria or hangovers or nutritional deficiencies. And then you have emotional stress, right? And emotional stress could be family tragedies, car accidents, uh, second mortgages, single parenting, 401ks, you know, whatever that is. Uh, but each one of those things, physical, chemical, or emotional, knock the body out of homeostasis, out of regulation, out of balance. The innate capacity of the body when it's not overstressed is that it wants to always return back and regulate. It wants to return back to homeostasis. It wants to return back to order. And that's innate in us. That's an automatic process that's running through the autonomic nervous system. So we could say the job of the autonomic nervous system is to create balance and regulation and homeostasis, and it's automatic. And that part of the brain sits under the thinking neocortex, and it's called the chemical brain or the emotional brain or the limbic brain or the mammalian brain. And it has all of those functions that make blood sugar balanced, hormone levels, digestive enzymes. It's, 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 it's doing what it can to take the body and constantly repair it and regenerate it and move it back into balance. All of those stressors knock the brain and body out of balance and the innate mechanism, the stress response, brings it back to balance. Well, it just makes sense. If you keep knocking it out of balance over and over again and you keep moving it out of homeostasis, that imbalance is going to become the new balance and now you're headed for a disease because that autonomic, automatic system can't regulate order in the body. So a system then is compromised. The system breaks down. And so if it's physical trauma, you know, your body can heal if you rest it. If it's chemical imbalance, you take your uh, pharmaceuticals or you take your nutraceuticals, your vitamins, your minerals, your herbs, you intermittent fast. You do anything you can to get the body back so that it's using more energy for growth and repair. But the big factor is emotional stress. 75 to 90% of every person that walks into a healthcare facility in the Western world walks in because of psychological or emotional stress. Pretty much four out of five people, what's really causing their health condition is that they're emotionally stressed and emotionally out of balance. Okay, so what are the emotions that are connected to the stress hormones? It's anger, it's hatred, it's frustration, it's competition, it's control. It's judgment, it's envy, it's jealousy, it's insecurity, it's fear, it's anxiety, it's worry, it's angst, it's uh, hopelessness, it's powerlessness, it's guilt, it's shame, it's unworthiness, you know. Uh, and psychology calls these normal human states of consciousness. These are altered states of consciousness. So our response to someone or something in our, in our environment or our response to our own thought, an image of what could happen in the future, a memory of the past, could actually cause chemicals to be secreted from the brain that causes the body to actually believe it's living in that same environment of fear or danger, right? So that thought, when you're seeing that thought in your mind or remembering that image, it's the image and the emotion, it's the thought and the feeling, it's the stimulus and response that's immediately conditioning the body into that state of imbalance. So it's a scientific fact that the long-term effects of the hormones of stress push the genetic buttons and create disease. If you can turn on that stress response just by thought alone, your thoughts are literally going to make you sick. That's the greatest example of the mind-body connection. So the next fundamental question is, okay, if our thoughts can make us sick, is it possible that my thoughts could make me well? Well, if that's the case then, then I'm going to have to manage my attention and I'm gonna to have to manage my energy because where I place my attention is where I place my energy. And I'm gonna to have to inhibit that thought that has conditioned the body to subconsciously be the mind. And the body's so objective that it does not know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that person is fabricating by thought alone. To the body, it's exactly the same. So the body's believing it's being chased by a predator. The body's believing it's in an, an offensive situation where it has to attack. The body's believing it's constantly needing to be ready and it's, it's constantly out of homeostasis. It's constantly uh -huh. out of balance. It's in emergency. It's in fight or flight. It's a different system 
in the autonomic nervous system where you're stepping on the gas, where you're, you're mobilizing enormous amounts of energy for some threat, some danger, real or imagined. But that thought and the feeling, the image, the emotion, the stimulus response is conditioning the body to automatically be the mind of that emotion. Now the body becomes conditioned and addicted. Now this gets to be a problem because people get addicted to their own thoughts and they become addicted to the life they don't even like because their response to the coworker, to the boss, to the ex is actually giving them a rush of energy, a rush of adrenaline, and then they're, they're associating that rush of energy with some problem or condition in their life. And now come time to change and manage your attention and manage your emotion, it's no different than breaking addiction to anything. There's cravings. The body wants to return back to how it's been conditioned into the familiar past, into the known. The body starts saying to the mind, you can, it's too hard, you'll never change, this is too uncomfortable, I don't like this, go back to make the same choice, do the same thing, create the same experience, feel the same emotion, so that you can return back to the known, and that's how people seamlessly return back to that same identity. So, we only accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts that are equal to our emotional state. We'll never accept, believe, and surrender any thoughts that are not equal to your emotional state. So you could say, I'm abundant, I'm eternal, I'll live forever, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy. And if you're programmed your body into that emotional state, it's going to say, you, you're not that. Take a person whose identity is resentment and their identity is anger and, and frustration and betrayal. And you ask them, why are you this way? And they'll say, I'm this way because of this event that happened to me 15 years ago. Stronger the emotion we feel from some event, the more altered we feel inside of us, the more that chemical continuity is disrupted from something that surprises us, that alters our state, the more the brain freezes a frame and takes a snapshot. That's called a memory. But the problem is that we think about that event over and over again after it happens, we're pr producing the same chemistry in the brain and body as if the event was occurring. And so the body is conditioned re literally into the past. So you say the person's resentful about everything. They're seeing their life through the lens of resentment and frustration and anger and everything's upsetting them. Well, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You say, okay, now it's an addiction. You got to change that. And the person goes, oh, okay, that makes sense. And now, now that you got to get out of the bleachers on the playing field and say, okay, these emotions could literally have something to do with my health. Just saying, if I stop feeling these emotions, what if I start feeling these emotions? Okay. What would be the emotions that would make me happy? These emotions are making me feel really bad. The memories are making me feel really bad. Can I remember a future? How would I feel if my future could happen? I got to trade those emotions for different emotions. Well, if I've been practicing feeling these emotions and I've conditioned my body to be the mind, it's going to take some time for me to start making different chemistry with the intention of making that chemistry, getting my body back into homeostasis and balance, Work on my breath. When I breathe, I change my state. Practice breathing. Work with your body so it can start to relax so that it feels safe enough to feel something other than that again. And if it takes you three weeks, it would be worth it. So then person then starts, okay, I don't really know how to feel gratitude. Okay, well, maybe start going out and giving and give to people. I promise you start giving, start feeling grateful. And then start practicing feeling gratitude. Teach your body just for 15 minutes a day, what it would like to feel gratitude, what it would be like. And our data shows that you take someone to do that for four days, three times a day, they make a immunoglobulin called immunoglobulin A. It's your body's natural flu shot. It's the greatest immune chemical we have. 50% increase in the subjects we studied in four days. Immunoglobulin A, up 50% in four days. Where? is that chemistry coming from? They're not taking anything. It's coming from within them, right? What is the emotional signature of gratitude? When you receive something, or you just receive something, when something wonderful happened to you, or something wonderful is happening to you, you feel grateful. So now, if you're in a state of gratitude, it makes total sense, then you will accept, believe, and surrender the thoughts that are equal to that emotional state, and you could actually program your autonomic nervous system to make the pharmacy of chemicals that causes growth and repair to happen in the body. And that's exactly what we're discovering. So then when people understand why they're doing it, the how gets easier. Mm -hmm. So you can assign meaning to the task and switch on the prefrontal cortex. And when you switch on that prefrontal cortex, it wants to get an outcome. It doesn't want to mess around. It wants the outcome. You're doing it for the outcome. 
And that's kind of a strong intention and a change in energy or an emotional state. And that's changing your state of being. And when you change your state of being like that every day, get ready because you're going to start having synchronicities and coincidences and weird things start happening in your life to prove to you that you're actually the creator of your life instead of the victim of your life. Thank you.